the thought of everything, specifically for people who get sweaty a lot. Did you know that the VW Passat is the second biggest selling Volkswagen of all time? In 50 years, it sold 34 million cars. That's more cars than the entire population of Australia. It's more cars than the most populous city in the world, the Chinese municipality of Chongqing, according to ChatGPT. In fact, it's enough cars for everyone in the UK to have half a VW Passat. But is it half as good as people make out? This is the latest ninth generation version of the Passat Estate, which VW calls the Passat Variant, except this time they've ditched the saloon, so the Variant is the only option. It promises more comfort, more luxury, more efficiency, better looks, and much better tech. Specifically, it's one of the first cars that comes equipped with AI in the form of VW's IDA, powered by ChatGPT. ChatGPT in a car just sounds bonkers to me, but let's try it out. Um, hello, Ida. Uh, I've got a date with a really hot girl who's into books. Recommend a book for me that I can use to pretend that I'm into the same stuff as her. From ChatGPT, that's great. Reading is a wonderful hobby. I recommend To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Nice. Anyway. It's quite an attractive car, don't you think? I'm not normally a fan of estates. I find them to be a little bit old mannish, but there's something about this that's really appealing to me. Maybe I'm getting on a bit in age, but there's some lovely design details. For the first time on a Passat, you've now got this horizontal light strip across the front, which lights up when you've got the full beams on. I don't like the fact that it doesn't connect fully to the DRLs at the side, but I do love the animation on here and the size of the indicator is absolutely enormous. You've also got some brand new headlights, HD matrix LEDs, which light your lane at night without blinding oncoming road users. There's actually a couple of different front end treatments you can go for. This is the Elegance trim, which has these horizontal chrome strips across the front end, but they also offer an R design package, which doesn't have the chrome and is blacked out completely and has a much more aggressive look. The biggest thing of all though, is the fact that the new Passat is much more aerodynamically efficient than before. It used to have a drag coefficient of 0.33. Now it's got a CD factor of 0.25, which is a huge drop. They say they've done this in a couple of ways. One is with these little air curtains at the side that just channel air around the wheel arch in a controlled way without creating turbulence and drag. And the second way is by reprofiling the bonnet. Apparently, it's now lower in the middle than it is at the sides. But I don't know about you, but to me, it looks like it's higher in the middle than at the sides. But I guess numbers don't lie. It's much more slippery through the air. Around the side, this is where it had the most potential to be boring because estates just tend to be one long featureless mass. But this has a lot of features. There's a lot going on here. There's creases and slashes. Look at this line that runs through the door handles all the way to the back. You've got a little kink back here. The big difference with this car is that it's now bigger than before. Same height, but 20 millimeters wider, 144 millimeters longer and with 50 millimeters more wheelbase. And that will give you a lot more space inside, which we shall now evaluate, shall we? Let's take a look at the boot because I like big boots. I cannot lie. These other channels can't deny. And uh, when a Passat goes by, <laughs> I don't know, man, but it's got a big old badunker dunk of a trunk. 690 liters, which is an increase of 40. You've got a flat load area just there. You've got some underfloor storage, a variety of hooks to put your shopping bags. There isn't enough space for a spare wheel, but there's enough space for your charging cables. You've got a 230 volt power outlet and you can drop the seats at the pull of a switch. And look at that. That is what estates are all about. This thing is cavernous. As you might expect, it's also incredibly spacious at the rear with a fantastic amount of legroom and footroom. Headroom is also very impressive, despite the fact it uses a large panoramic glass roof. There's also a few clever touches, including some mobile phone storage in the seat backs, individual controls for the rear heating and cooling, a couple of USB ports, an armrest with integrated cup holders, plus a dedicated phone or tablet holder, some rear ambient lights and a window blind. Up front, a lot has changed in the new Passat. VW have tried to position this car at a higher end of the market to go against the likes of the Mercedes E-Class and the BMW 5 Series. Although, I'm not sure I buy that. It's very commendable, it's well built, it looks decent, 
but there's just too much piano black going on. That's my first impression in this car. It all looks a bit too plasticky, a bit too reflective. Technology wise, it's very good. I've got a nice big driver display in front of me. I've also got a proper head up display for the first time, but oh my God, would you look at this thing? What an absolute monstrosity. Now, as standard, it comes with a 12 inch infotainment screen, but you can upgrade to the high end package and get a 15 inch display slapped on the dashboard. My first computer was a 486SX25 with a 15 inch screen, and I'm pretty sure it wasn't as big as this. My first telly wasn't as big as this. I've got my MacBook right here, and it's actually smaller than the screen you get on the Volkswagen Passat. What is going on? Having said that, it does work really well. It's super fast. It's an eight core system, loads of RAM, faster than my first computer. And just look at the speed and responsiveness of that. It is very impressive actually. And it's a lot better than the previous generation of infotainment systems you got in Volkswagen cars, a lot more customizable. The entire top row can be customized. You can now have shortcuts to your favorite things on the top row. The bottom is dedicated permanently to your air con. And speaking of which, you've now got backlit controls for your heating, ventilation and climate control and your volume slider as well, which is a big improvement on a previous car. Speaking of buttons, they've also got proper buttons on the steering wheel. They never had that before. It was capacitive and it was awful. We all complained about it and it just goes to show bullying and peer pressure sometimes works. One of VW's aims with the new Passat was to improve the quality and the comfort. And the minute you start driving this car, you start to get a real sense of that. The materials feel really nice to the touch. There's some lovely exposed stitching. There's lovely ambient lights, a nice big panoramic glass sunroof, and the whole thing feels like quality. They've also done a really good job in terms of keeping things quiet and refined. Specifically, they've given us a double glazed front windscreen. We've also got double glazing on both sides for the driver and for the passenger, but also for the passengers at the rear. These seats are really nice as well. They've been completely redesigned with lumbar supports and as standard, you get a three chamber massage system. If you upgrade the seats and go for the Ergo Active Plus, you get a 10 chamber pressure point massage, which I've tried and it feels absolutely sensational. There's a host of different massage programs to choose from. I've got waves for my back, waves for lumbar, waves for shoulder, circles. My favorite though is one called Upstrokes, which feels absolutely tremendous. On a lot of cars, the massaging function just feels like a bit of a gimmick, but in this, genuinely, it feels pretty good. If you go for the Ergo Active Plus seats, then it takes things up a notch. That comes with heating, cooling, and a temperature sensor and a moisture sensor. So basically it monitors the temperature and sweatiness of your backside and can then automatically apply the heating, cooling and air conditioning to make sure your ass isn't too sweaty. I've never seen that before in the car, but it's very clever. There's even another mode for people who get sweaty feet. If I hold the auto button down here on the bottom left and then click cool my feet, it will actually blow cool air conditioned air at your feet to keep them from getting too sweaty. And you can actually apply that to a shortcut permanently on the screen. So if you have really sweaty feet all the time, it's right there accessible whenever you need it. Plus you can call it up using voice recognition. They've thought of everything specifically for people who get sweaty a lot. A significant new update with the new Passat is the next generation suspension system, which features two valves on each of the dampers, designed to make for a smoother ride than systems with a single valve because it gives the car better body control through improved damping of both compression when you go into bumps and rebound when you come back out. There's also a bigger difference between the softest and hardest suspension modes, and it all works very well. Here's something interesting actually, one of the VW engineers was telling me that one reason for people feeling very tired after a long journey is because of the lack of body control in their cars. You're compensating by kind of tensing up your torso and using your core muscles to stabilize you. But with this system, because the body control is that much better, in theory, you'll get to your destination feeling that little bit fresher. There are various engine options in the new Passat, but if you like the idea of a plug-in hybrid like I'm driving here, you have two options, a 204 horsepower setup or a 272 horsepower setup. 
They're not the most powerful, torque is only 250Nm so it feels a bit weaker than your average diesel, but the efficiency is good. Both hybrids use a 1.5 litre millicycle TSI engine alongside a 19.7 kWh battery, which delivers a pretty realistic EV only range of 62 miles. One of the great things about a plug-in hybrid system is that it really contributes to the refinement of this car. It's super quiet in here and it's a genuine treat to drive. The other thing I've noticed is that you can actually save some battery power. If you want to arrive at your destination with a specific level of battery charge, you can reserve that battery so that you're driving in town on full electric that you haven't wasted on your journey to get to that point. Generally speaking, running out of battery in a plug-in hybrid can really shatter the illusion of refinement because when the engine does kick in, it sounds really gruff in comparison to the electric motor. But in this, they've actually done a really good job of making the engine sound half decent. So it's not so much of a hardship to run out of battery power. So what's my verdict on the new VW Passat? Well, I got into this car thinking that it wouldn't be anywhere near as good as say a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes E-Class, but the longer I've spent with it, the more it's won me over. This car is genuinely nice to drive. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it's refined. The technology can be somewhat overwhelming. There's a lot of it, but generally speaking, it's a fantastic car. I guess 34 million people can't be wrong.